Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm an Applications Engineer at National Instruments. This module is going to be an introduction to LabVIEW, both the environment and LabVIEW as a programming language. This module will be the introduction into a series of modules helping you to learn LabVIEW. I'll also show you how to create a simple program that does the Pythagorean Theorem. In some cases, I will be comparing LabVIEW to text-based programming to help you learn LabVIEW. Let's go ahead and open up LabVIEW. You can start it by going to Start, Programs, National Instruments, and then selecting LabVIEW. You'll notice the first thing that comes up is the Getting Started screen. On the right hand side, there are a number of resources for you, such as LabVIEW Fundamentals and the Example Finder. We'll start by opening up a blank VI. VI stands for Virtual Instrument. A virtual instrument is a program written in LabVIEW. So let's click on blank VI. You'll notice two windows come up, the front panel and the block diagram. One neat trick to be able to switch between the two is to hit Control E. You can also hit it again to switch back. Another trick to be able to see both at the same time is to hit Control T to tile the windows. Let's start with the front panel. The front panel is a user interface, and only information relevant to the user is shown here. Any behind the scenes code is thrown into the block diagram. This is the engine room of LabVIEW and processes any data and variables. This is where you write the code that defines behavior of the VI. Let's focus on the front panel for now. What kind of inputs would a user want for the Pythagorean theorem? If you recall, the Pythagorean theorem says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Solving for c, we get c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. And so, the two inputs that we'd want are a and b. Any input from the user is called a control in LabVIEW. Let's place two numeric controls, or inputs, on the front panel for a and b. To do this, we first have to pull up the control palette by right-clicking. Numeric controls are under the numeric palette. There are a number of other kinds of controls, such as booleans and strings and file paths. However, our A and Bs are simply numbers, so we'll just drop down a numeric control. I'll go ahead and change the name of this to A. You'll notice that the name numeric is already highlighted, so I just simply have to type to change it. put another one down, I can simply click and drag while holding the control button. And I'm going to change the name of this one to B. And then I'm going to change what the numbers are. So for A, I'm just simply going to type it in. Let's make A 12. And then for B, I'm just going to use these arrows here to show you that you can simply do that also. So I'll make B 5. Now what do we want to use to show the result of the Pythagorean Theorem? We need an indicator. A control is an input, whereas an indicator is the output of the function. It's very similar to text space. In order to put an indicator down on the front panel, we'll go back to our numeric palette and select the numeric indicator. Again, I'll click and drag it down and change the name to C. Now let's talk about the block diagram. You'll notice that once I put the controls and indicators on the front panel, they put icons on the block diagram. So how do we take the two inputs and spit out the output? LabVIEW uses data flow from controls through functions to indicators rather than top to bottom execution as in text base. We want a way of transferring the data from the controls to the indicator. You'll actually be able to see this later when I show you highlight execution. If I right-click on the block diagram, I get the functions palette. First, I'm going to go to numeric and select the squared function so I can have a squared and b squared. And again, I can hit control, click and drag. And then I need the sum, so I'll go back to the functions palette and then the numeric sub palette and get the add function. 
And then I need the square root function, also located on the numeric palette. So now I need a way of transferring the variables a and b into each of the functions, and then as an output a c. You'll notice on a and b there are a little arrow. If I hover over that, you'll notice that the mouse changes to a wire spool. Lavi uses wire to show where data flows. So what I'll do is I'll click here and drag the wire to the input of the squared function. You'll notice it creates a wire. I'll do the same for B. And then I'll go ahead and take the sum of the newly squared variables and then the output of the sum into the square root and then wire the square root to the output C. Now that we've fin finished the program, we want to go ahead and run it. You can run it by simply hitting this white arrow. LabVIEW constantly compiles everything, so there is no compiling required. You'll notice that you can run the program from either the block diagram or the front panel by hitting this white arrow. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll notice C is 13. Let's turn on the highlight execution that I mentioned before. To do that, you simply click this light bulb here, which turns on highlight execution. What this allows you to do is to actually see the data flowing through your program. So now that it's on, I'll run the program again, and you can watch the variables come from A and go through each of the functions to the output C. One other neat little trick is if you hit Control H, a new window will come up that's called the Context Help. What this is is it gives you detailed information on a function. So if I go and hover over the square root, you'll notice that the Context Help shows me the name, the inputs and outputs, and some more information on what the function actually does. If you still need more information, you can click on Detailed Help, and that'll bring up the LabVIEW help file on that function. Something else that's neat, if you want more help or, or an example on that function, you can simply click open example in the LabVIEW help. So let's review. The block diagram is the engine room for processing data and the front panel is the user interface. A control is a user defined input variable and an indicator is the output or the result of the function. The functions palette has all of the functions you will need and is only on the block diagram. And the controls palette is everything you will need for the user interface and can only be found on the front panel. This concludes the first module. Please take some time to work on the following exercise before proceeding to the next installment. Thank you for your time.